Well, it's about time for a nice, quick, low-budget, 90-second mycology screen recording cliché video. Nice crappy little headset, nice crappy quality screen recording. Alright, so what causes the Uncle Ben's technique to fail for so many people? I've had an influx of messages recently on people showcasing their techniques on different forums and message boards. Also new cultivators that are just asking around like, Hey, what do you know about that Uncle Ben's tech? And they immediately just get dumped on. They get belittled and berated for even typing those words anywhere near somebody's eyeballs to read. And they come to me like, I've had great success from your YouTube channel and the Uncle Ben subreddit, why are all these people just trash talking this? It works so well, why, we don't get it. So the safest place you can talk about this stuff is going to be the Uncle Ben subreddit right here. Reddit.com slash r slash Uncle Ben's. If you don't know what Reddit is, it's just another messaging forum based platform. It's pretty anonymous. You can head over here to this subreddit, Uncle Ben's. This is where a lot of people start off and then they find the 90 second mycology YouTube channel. Here are some stickied posts on the desktop version if you sort by hot, hot posts. Part one right here, if you're completely brand new and you're just researching how mushrooms and mycelium grow, start right there with part one of the official write-up. If you don't know me from Reddit, I am the moderator of the Uncle Ben subreddit right here, along with the creator Shroom Scout. So you can always come here, you're safe to just hang out, you can ask any question you have about your Uncle Ben bags. Any other brand of 90 second rice from all over the world, it's not only about Uncle Ben's, got some agar here, some fat fruits. All sorts of good stuff. Another good resource is the Contam Fam subreddit right here, our Contam Fam. You can come hang out here, read a lot of stuff from fruits to substrates to agar to grains to 90 second rice bags post your own questions if you smell something weird or you see something weird you can head over here ask some questions and learn some new things. So I think the number one reason why people love to hate using pre-sterilized 90 second rice is just jealousy. They spent all this money over the years on expensive setups. So once they realize that something like this is really taking off and we are achieving the same results, sometimes even better, and we didn't even pressure sterilize not one thing was pressure cooked or canned, they're just jealous. And when you ask them, well, what's wrong with it? You know, I really just wanna know why does it suck so bad? Nobody has a real answer other than it sucks, get a pressure cooker. And it's like, why? I just want a few mushrooms to eat before I decide, hey, I might wanna dive deeper into mycology, start a little happy mushroom farm and feed my family. So on top of jealous people, there are also bad syringes out there. A lot of shady vendors like to just sell a bunch of crap to people, whether it's spores or liquid culture that's already contaminated inside of the syringe because they did not care how they prepared it. They're just out to make a quick buck. You really need to find a reputable mushroom vendor. You can get syringes in liquid culture on Reddit or just Google. If you don't know the difference between a spore syringe and a liquid culture because you're still researching, I've got a video about that on the 90 Second Mycology YouTube channel right here. So you can learn more about what should I buy, a spore syringe, liquid culture, Culture syringe it all depends on the species of mushrooms you're growing and also your area of where you live and if you watch that video you'll see what I mean new cultivators should also know that spores directly to grain is the worst practice in mycology the only benefit is that it is the easiest way to get started when you can just germinate your spores directly in the grain and then let them form mycelium and colonize the grain you really should always germinate spores whether it's from a syringe or a spore print directly on agar and I scrolled past a post here on Uncle Ben's, which was a great example why. Right here, uh, Miller91320, shout out to you. You can see that Miller germinated some spore syringes right here. The MSS stands for multi-spore syringe. And look at that contamination on the agar. Let's say some hateful noob that loves to trash talk the 90 second rice technique bought a syringe that had this contamination in it already. And then they went ahead and inoculated 45 bags, which I really don't understand why people do that when they're first starting out. All 45 bags from that crappy syringe is going to grow this contamination in there with it. Miller. 91320, you called it. 
I wouldn't say they're trashed. If you have no other options, you can definitely isolate the clean mycelium away from the contamination. That's how you can save a multi-spore syringe. Just inoculate on agar and then take the clean stuff out of there. So when you take your spores directly to grain and it's already contaminated, you ruin the grain. So the person that did that and inoculated 45 bags with a bad syringe is just going to completely go on the internet and say, oh, this technique was garbage. I've had nothing but failure. I've lost 45 bags, waste of money. And that's because you did not do your own research, look into the true correct practices, and also look at good reputable mushroom vendors. Another reason for failure is too much solution is injected. A lot of people like to inject directly at the view window because you can see the growth right away, and then they end up getting rice stuck in the syringe, and then they push that plunger on the syringe extra hard, and they squirt out that piece of rice, and then they end up squirting so much solution behind that. And the only issue with the 90 second rice is that it is overly moist high moisture content it's pretty saturated because when you warm it up for 90 seconds that moisture steams the rice for a more enjoyable eating experience even though you can eat them right off the shelf they're already sterile the 90 seconds is to just warm it up so to combat this you can always inject above the rice so the syringe does not get clogged when you do this you'll feel the colonization after two or more weeks from spores because spores have a germination period if you use a liquid culture as i explained in the liquid culture and spore syringe video it's already got viable mycelium in it so you're going to have have faster colonization because the mycelium is already there. From spores, the spores need to germinate before they actually start forming mycelium together. So just check the rest of the videos on my channel and you'll have most of your questions answered. Also when you inject above the rice like this, you won't see anything at the view window most likely until a break and shake. I've got a video on a break and shake and it's more thoroughly explained in my grain to grain video. So breaking and shaking is just distributing your colonized grains with your uncolonized grains to achieve a 100% colonized bag. And then in my grain to grain video, on all of my videos, if you check the description, I've got timestamps right here. So on the grain to grain video right here at 1310, I've got the 12 day check in and then I did a more thoroughly explained breaking and shaking of the grains. And then this also leads to anxious new cultivators. They just cannot leave the bags alone and practice patience. A lot of people are immediately looking at their bags within two days. They're picking them up, they're touching them, they're spitting on them, they're breathing on them. People have even peeled back their gas exchange tape to try to look in there and see what's going on. And then they get contaminated and then they just trash talk the whole technique and it's like, well, I wonder why you got contaminated. It takes time for spores to germinate and grow. Two plus weeks and especially if you inoculate above the rice you're only going to feel the colonization you're not going to see anything at all until you do the break and shake so anxious new cultivators if you're getting into this hobby you need to learn the art of patience the less you touch your grains even if it's in a bag or a jar or you sterilize your own grains the more you're handling that stuff and looking at it the higher your chances are of something getting contaminated On top of that, poor conditions can also cause failure. You really need constant warm temperatures. I have that all explained in my mushroom spawn incubation box video right here on how you can keep your grains and substrates at the perfect temperature without running a space heater in a closet. If that's something you don't want to do, some people don't want to run a whole space heater in a closet, a little mushroom spawn incubation box is perfect. The constant warm temperatures really make a difference it's not oh it you know it stays like 75 but i don't know it might go down to like 65 at night is that my problem yes that is your problem you, you need constant temperatures also the mycelium needs to breathe you always need gas exchange several stretch needle holes or a cut corner or hole punches a lot of people watch that 30 minute syringe inoculation video that i have where i use the needle to make those needle holes for the gas exchange and then they don't listen to anything that i said where i set it on screen and i typed it on screen you need to stretch those needle holes 
Do not simply poke the needle and leave pinholes for gas exchange. You try breathing through tiny pinholes. Think of it that way. You need gas exchange. It needs to breathe in order to colonize. So when a lot of people come to me, especially in the new Discord server, you can check the link in the description of this video to join the Discord server. They come through and they say, Hey, it's been five weeks and I don't see anything. It's like, all right, we need more information. How's your gas exchange? How's your temperatures? Where'd your syringe come from? Would you do this and that? What are you doing? And then most often, more often than not, it turns out that somebody just did this. They made little pinholes for gas exchange or their temperatures at night are falling way below colonization temperatures or they just got a bad syringe. And this is all the same. Whether you're going to use 90 second rice or any other grain spawn pre-sterilized grains from a vendor is no different than pre-sterilized grains from your grocery store spores directly to grain is the worst practice in mycology and you could say the same for liquid culture because if it's not from a reputable mushroom vendor you could have contaminated liquid culture as well also generally dirty environments from new cultivators who do not take sanitary procedures seriously you need to stay clean. That's not a joke. It's not like just growing plants on your back porch or an herb garden in your kitchen. Mushroom cultivation involves a lot of cleanliness, and that goes for any mushroom technique. So hopefully this low budget video that I threw together real quick can explain some of the questions a lot of people have on what causes the Uncle Ben's tech to fail for so many people. Why are so many people reading about failure stories? And it's just because people love to complain, you know? It's like how often do you see a good review compared to negative reviews on anything in the world? It really comes down to jealousy, bad syringes, anxious new cultivators, and poor conditions. That's really all there is to it. It's the same for any mushroom cultivation technique. Whether you're sterilizing your own grains, or you're buying pre-sterilized grains from a mushroom vendor, or you're buying the pre-sterilized 90 second grains from your grocery store. So the next time someone says it sucks and they have no answer other than it sucks, get a pressure cooker, just show them this video and they're still gonna find something to complain about. That's all there is to it other than common sense will almost always prevail.